in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and I will seek after you that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and inquire in his temple. This is it. For in the temple, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Let me skip on down to the key verse I'm trying to get to. Verse 14. Wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Amen. I Amen. the choir singing that. They sing the word of God. He's just making up words to sing. He's singing the word of God. So it's, so it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Now, I told the young people I'll try to take my time because they need more than 20 minutes. <laughs> so I said, I'll try to give you 30 minutes. I'll try to stretch you out because they know me. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to try to slow my road a little bit. The church needs some time back there, they said. They need a little time. I'm about to talk to them. So they said they need y'all to stay in here. Mm. All right. So. <laughs> they sound good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just for the key things, again, for everybody who came late, I'm Reverend Jefferson. I'm not the pastor or the assistant pastor. They're not here. All right. You got me. <laughs> However, today, in church, we recognize two ordinances of the church, because as you see, we have this is Communion Sunday. And just for history's sake, some churches used to just have church service on one Sunday a month. Whatever that Monday was, that Sunday was, that's when they had communion. This, they went to two, two services a month. And so that one month, one Sunday would be the communion service. And so, you know, and so forth. So now they start having service every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so whatever service they had, the communion Sunday, they continued that. And some of them changed to just first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday. And you can say, well, I had communion last Sunday, tell the church. That's okay. You had communion every day. All right? If anybody knows, you know, we're transgressors of the law. We all sin and fall short. Because we all did something. You didn't even dream right last night. It's all good. It's all good. All right? This is what we do. But these two things. So anyway, water baptism is the other word. It's this public declaration of our identification with Jesus in his death and resurrection. It symbolizes the judgment that Jesus in his death took upon himself for all people of all times. The New Testament clearly shows it is the blood of Jesus, not water baptism, mm. that brings us cleansing and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. For by his blood, we are justified. Amen. Our consciousness, our cleanse, we are redeemed. So that's about baptism. And can everybody hear me back in the rear? Y'all good? Okay. All right. Now, the Lord's Supper was instituted by the Lord Jesus Christ on the occasion of the last Passover meal with the disciples, often called the Last Supper. Hours before he died on the cross for our sins, the communion takes the place of the Passover of the Old Testament, for Christ was our Passover lamb. That's our history. That's what we do, what we do. And in the black Indian churches, when we had, uh, they had real wine, and crackers, and what they would do was, you saw a sheet, you think somebody was dead. So what they did, they had a sheet over the stuff, they keep the flies from getting there. All right? So I know you're from your old church, some of us old people, you know, older, you know, we used to see in the sheet claws, that one called somebody was dead, it was keeping flies on. All right, a little history, that's all. Okay. Uh, today, we, what we're going to do is we're going to review a little bit first over my last two sermons that are brought forth, but some of the people weren't here because they all connect. And it's all in the book of Philippians, okay? Amen. You turn to the book, but I'm not going to give you the chapter yet, and it's not but like four chapters there, so it's easy to find. <laughs> anyway, so the last two times that I brought the message, the text came from the book of Philippians, and again, today we continue to say, Paul wrote this letter to take the church to thank the church at Philippi for not only their spiritual support, but for their financial support as well. So financial support has always been a need, okay? Some scholars believe Paul was under arrest in Rome. Some believe he was in arrest in Caesarea Philippi. It matters nowhere, but if you're arrested, you don't care where you're locked up, if you're locked up, you know, you're not free. So the point is, he was locked up. 
However, he still shared the good news, even though he was locked up. Amen. He shared it with the guards, anyone around him. He wrote this letter to encourage the church. He wanted them to work together. Hello, work Amen. together. Mm -hmm. He wanted them to love each other. Uh-huh. Love each other. Uh-huh. Well, then, mm -hmm. and so the Bible relates to that before and to now, and it's talking about the, oh, okay, I can relate that. Okay. He wanted all to know the Lord better. He wrote them, but no, there is also a meaning for us today. Today we can apply to our lives. My first sermon came from chapter 3, verse 13 through 15 a. Okay, the first sermon that I did. And it was titled, Forget what's behind, reach what's before, and press. That was the first sermon that I did a while back. Basically, we've all sinned and fallen short. God wants us to repent, forget the past, take the weights off, all that stuff you carry with you, boo-hooing, get in the race, stay on the track, and run. And don't look back. Amen. We must run knowing it's not always the fastest person who wins the race. Because in this race, it makes no difference whether you come in first or last. You just need to finish the race. The goal is to cross the finish line. Finally, we must press at the finish line, not looking to our left or to our right. We must keep our eyes focused on the mark, and the mark is Jesus. Let me see. Let me go back a little bit. When I concluded that message, it's read like this. This is my conclusion. We've already wasted enough time this year. Let's start loving each other like there's no tomorrow. Amen. Let's love each other through the sorrow. Let's love each other through the pain. Let's love each other through the ups and the downs. Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching towards those things which are before us, and press to the finish line. That was sermon number one. The second sermon came from chapters three also, verse 17 through 20, entitled, When You Cross the Finish Line. Paul told the Philippians to follow his example. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Do you know anyone that might imitate Christ on Sunday, but favor the world all the other days. Mm. I, I'm just saying. Mm. Do they pretend to be what their surrounding is? There's an animal called the chameleon, a lizard-type creature. It's described as a quick-change artist. It alters its shade of skin into the environment it's in. In other words, if the environment is brown, it's brown. If it's green, it's green. If it's red, it's great. Whatever the environment is, that lizard or chameleon changes its shape to or its color to. Some people change their personality depending on who they are with and where they are. Wow. A person could be a party animal one moment, then they look down on the party lifestyle of others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul reminded them not to follow the imitators. For when they cross the finish line in here, you have been disqualified. Depart from me. I never knew you. That would be a sad day. Today, Paul is reminding the Philippians that while they are in the flesh and running the race, there are sometimes some things we should do while running. This race called life, trying to finish the course. Oh, let me go to the conclusion of that second. The conclusion of that other one was this. I said, when you cross that finish line, and you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That's if you cross the finish line doing right. Otherwise, you will hear, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But today, today's title is, You Better Think on These Things. Mm. And again, keep you see. Yeah, yeah. Paul is closing out on this matter, on this letter. And he, he's recapping all the things he's putting in a nutshell on what we should think about now. He said, you run the race, that's what you do, you can finish your course. However, he says in verse 8, finally, 
brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received, and heard and seen me in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. In other words, do. He gonna be with you. May the Lord God bless the reading, the hearing, and the practical application Amen. of his word. Amen. You better think on these things. It's the message today. Right. You had better think on these things. Paul tells the church we're to keep our minds focused. Point number one. You need to keep your minds on the things that are true, honest, just, pure, loving, and of good report. Now, in case you're confused, you should not think on the following things. Think about this. Take a moment and just think back. Don't go back too far, though. <laughs> Have you ever said, what was I thinking when I did blank? You fill in the blank. <laughs> what was I thinking when I married him? I mean, her. Uh, <laughs> When I dated him, what was I thinking when I wore that? What was I thinking when I went there? What was, you wouldn't think. Anyway, we weren't thinking. I'm gonna keep this on us. Well, the answer is we we were not thinking. We were not thinking positively. You know, we were in the world, so we were thinking as the world thinks. And just plain, what we do here, the word is for the children of God. Those who have been accepted Christ as personal Savior, and we believe this, so you believe this word, so the word is, is truth. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior, it, it might be cutting you a little bit, you know, but it's okay, because it cut us too, and it's still cutting. It's still cutting. You know, the, the point of it is, is that we're born in darkness, and then we won't find the light. The light is the word of God. Amen. We're born upside down. But the word of God was turn us right side up. So if it's hitting you, just say, ouch, and move on. Because it hits me first. Because I'm the one that had to go and study and say, oh, Lord, yeah, you're right. Mm, what was I thinking? <laughs> what, 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 uh, what, mm, 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 I shouldn't be doing that. But anyway, so what, what, what was is that I was thinking of things that were untrue, fabricated, concocted stuff. I, I was dishonest, behaving in an untrustworthy way, unjust, I, I, unfair, one-sided, bigoted way. I'm looking at it my way. Immoral, morally wrong, just doing the wrong thing. Oh, Hanging with the wrong crowd. Going with the, with the group. Nasty, wicked, all kinds of things. You know, you got your stuff, I got my stuff. I can't tell you, but you got your stuff. You know what I'm saying? We all got our stuff. We did. And you call it nice if you want to, but God says it's nasty, wicked. If it was unlovely, it was nasty and wicked. A bad report. In other words, you had bad character. You didn't have a good reputation. You want to be not known by the names your parents gave you. You want to be known by, well, my group was sly, slick, and wicked. Yeah, my partners. Up to no good. You know, I, at least I had a chance, because my name is Sylvester, so you know, that's what the side. But that wasn't the purpose. You know what I'm saying? And, and so we had bad, bad character. You know, we weren't out, we were out for no good. Because we didn't sign in in places as Sylvester Jefferson. I signed in as Mr. Slot, Mr. Slick, Mr. Slick. And you know we was up to no good. But, but thanks be to God. Now, let us come back. Let's come back. Come back to right here, right now. I'm all right. It's really back here, all right? So let us be like Paul said, think on these things that are true. Stop lying to each other. Hello. 
In Colossians, it says, line not to one another. That's Colossians 3, 9. And it got some more to it. It says in 2 Timothy 2, 25, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and, and that honest, be honest, live honestly. All that is decent and honorable, you know, pray for each other. Amen. Amen. For we trust we have a, a good conscience and all things willing to live honestly. It's nothing like a thief. If, he, if they say they're still, they'll do all kinds of things. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Live honestly. Just. Live by faith. All that is in harmony with justice or righteousness. Live by faith. They say it's in the Bible, in Galatians, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Pure. Live morally good. All that is holy for the body. Hello? Matthew 5 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Live lovingly. Live pleasing, agreeable, as a blessing to others. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is not huffed up. I got mine, you better get yours. Help a brother out. So, love. And that love they talk about is that, like Philadelphia love, the Phileo love, love one for another. Have a good report, not an evil report. Like kids get a report card. I mean, if God had to do a report card on you, would it be a good report? Oh, yeah. Report, but good in harmony with the best public good. If they're mean in virtue, virtue is moral goodness. If they're mean in praise, whatever is praiseworthy. Well, when praises go up, they say, what comes down? Blessings. Blessings come down. So be praiseworthy. Think on these things, that we may both practice them ourselves and recommend them to others. It says, practice them and recommend them to others. Paul wants them to remember, point number two. Remember your training. Why go to school if you don't apply your learning? I'm pretty job. I mean, you go to school, you send your kids to school, your kids come home, and you say, well, but son, here's the, uh, here, here's what, how much money I make, and figure out, uh, we're gonna spend this much for your school, and forget this, how much money we got left, and, oh, wait a minute, what you learn in school? I mean, you gotta apply what you learn. And that's when we forget our training sometimes, you know? Remember your training. Those things which you have both learned, Learn means you learn it and you practice it. Amen. Those things you have received, that mean blessings. You receive blessings for God. Those things you've heard, those are doctrines. And the things you've seen by example. Not monkey see, monkey do, because you might be seeing the wrong thing. But things, that be good examples that we've seen. We must do the things we have learned and seen, heard and saw by example. God then will be with us, or if not, God will reject us. We must teach, preach, and set the example. Where? To our co-workers, because they're watching us. To our neighbors, because they see us. To our families, because they know us. Amen. Hello. Amen. You know, you can convince your family, you might get somewhere, but it starts at home. People hear what we say. But they watch what, you do. what we do. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say that one again. People hear what we say, but they watch what we do. Yeah, I, you say you heard about a storm, brother. I'm gonna come over there and see you. I got a package for you. Hmm. Have you seen them? No, man, I ain't seen them. They said they were coming. Yeah. Okay, meet me at the church at eight. We, we all, all the fellas need to meet, meet up over there at eight o'clock. Have you seen them yet? It's, it's nine o'clock. No, bro. Hello. So let us all do better. Let's lead by example. No excuses. God asked us to just do it. Way before Nike did. <coughs> Nike said, just do it. We want to do it. God said, just do it. No matter your situation, stay focused on God's word. Stay motivated on God's word. Keep moving on God's word as we run this race called life. Paul says God will bless them if they do the, these things. Learn, 
received, heard from him and by his example. Transition is this. Do you want the wrath or the peace of God in your life? Point number three. I want the peace mm -hmm. in the midst of the war, because there's always a war going on. I want, the, I want peace in the midst of the war. And then verse 9b, part b, and the God of peace shall be with you. If you want peace from God, we must think true thoughts, honest, just, pure, loving, and of good report. And if we truly want peace, we must remember the things we have learned, received, heard, and so, by example, if we truly want peace, then God of peace shall be with us. If we truly want peace. Amen. However, some of you are sure remember this. Aretha Franklin had a song entitled, You Better Think. Mm -hmm. You better think what you're trying to do to me. One key verse in the song says this. I ain't no psychiatrist. I ain't no doctor with degrees. But it don't take much IQ to see what you're doing to me. Now, what was he, or he, what somebody was doing to a ring? Well, I think it was sin. Well, no, I know it's sin. Think what you're doing to me. Then you, I say, is sin. What is sin doing to me? What is sin doing to you? We should be able to say, no, I'm not a psychiatrist, nor am I a doctor, but I hold a PhD. I'm past having doubts about the Word of God. We should all hold a PhD. I know I have the victory. I have the victory in Jesus. We better think. We better think. We better think what we want to hear when we cross that finish line called life. Welcome home, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me. I never knew you. Make your election sure Today, you know storms come and storms go. Last week, Hurricane Dorian was on the minds of many, as Katrina was before and many other storms. And if, if you know, a storm when it gets hard, it can't go to four, five, and they hit real hard, there'll never be a Katrina again, because they, they don't rename it. There'll never be a, a Dorian again, but there will be another storm. They're just naming something else. And if you know a little history, all the storms in the past were named after women. I wonder why. They said women was tearing up stuff. And then the women protested. And so they ended up storms after men and women, equal opportunity. So men, you tell stuff too. They were trying to say. That's all. I just want to let you know that little history. That's all. Women just don't tear up stuff. See? So they corrected that. Okay, it was terrible knowing that you have no ability to do anything. If you're up in a storm, that you can't stop the storm. You just got to get out the way if you can. You go right, and you think the storm's going to go left. The storm comes the same way you're going. <laughs> knowing the storm is coming and being at its mercy. And when I was reading the newspaper this morning, Reverend Ray, our, our former pastor, before Pastor Ellis, he used to always say a couple of things. He said, you keep your Bible and your newspaper in your hand. So I looked at the newspaper this morning. I ain't got a newspaper in months. Mm -hmm. and, but I knew it was going to have something about Katrina, 9-11, mm -hmm. and all that in there. And so there was this one lady in Bahama. Well, you know, she had seen these storms come and go before. So she wasn't leaving. She said, oh, no. It's this rich man tried to get there. He knew her. He had met her before. You know, said, hey, I can fly a plane here to get you. Get your whole family out. Oh no, we good. Man, read the argument. All I know is that she was in the house. This wall came down. They went to another room. That wall came down. All the windows blew out. Oh Lord, they say you know the house is coming down. So they went from that house to the neighbor's house. Then the neighbor's house started crumbling. Then, then they went from that house to another house. And the storm got that house. They couldn't run from the storm. Storms be coming. Well, she, she, she in, my, in the Florida now. See what I'm saying? She was slow. But, but, but she in Florida now. Lord, that storm will run you away, run you from home. Even though you know the storm is coming. And being at this mercy, maybe emotionally, not prepared, but just holding on. I can imagine a lady just holding on. Then afterwards, the outpouring of support 
to victims, but know that they will only last for a little while. People are only help for a little while, and they move on to the next case. Just like, remember 9-11. Most of us uh, adults can remember where we were in 9-11. You know, and some people don't remember nothing about 9-11. That's okay. But America felt kind of united after that for a little while. People filled the churches for a little while. All oh, everybody was praying for the nation for a little while. But only, only, only for a little while. We even show love towards some of our enemies for a little while. Then we go back to doing our own selfish routine until the next tragedy hits. God wants us to know today is that we need to always think on things that his word says. We need to think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. Then we would do the right things. Before, then we would do the right things before, during, and after the storm. Two of the words from this group of true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report really caught my attention. I'm gonna say it again: true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. Made me think about the character Superman. Trust. It was truth and justice. You know, y'all heard that? Remember Superman? And I said, truth and justice. Yeah, yeah, truth and justice. Truth, justice, and the American way. Wow. I said, okay, let me look that up. So Superman is depicted as having amazing powers, super strength, super speed, x-ray vision, and he flies. He's faster than a speedy bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. He was able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Mm -hmm. And when they look up to the sky and they say, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, ah! it's super chicken, no, it's super plane, it's super plane. <laughs> but he has one weakness, and what is that? <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all, y'all heard that, it's kryptonite. It made him weak at the knees. Something, if something makes you weak at the knees, think about what that makes you. Weak at the knees. That's your kryptonite in your life. If something makes you weak at the knees, that's your kryptonite. But I know of one that no kind of kryptonite can affect. If you trust in him, he will be your strength and weakness. His name is Jesus. My God and my Savior. No grave can hold him down. Jesus got up with all power in his hand. Jesus is faster than light, for he is light. Right. Jesus is so fast, he knows what the end will be. His word is more powerful than a two-edged sword. I can imagine that someday, someone will be looking towards heaven, and sky will crack, and they'll say, look, it's a bird? No. It's a plane? No. Is it Superman? Uh-uh. Uh. But the Son of Man, but the Son of God, my Lord, my God, the Prince of Peace, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the Bright and Morning Star, Jesus, oh Jesus, when Jesus speaks, if you want to hear God and faithfully be a faithful servant, you must live like the Word says. And how, as I close, C.A. Spurgeon, and ain't it still larger, the Prince of Peace, said it this way. You got to be on the side of everything that is good and right. You got to be on the side of everything that helps the human progress. You got to be on the side of everything that increases virtue and purity. You got to be on the side of everything that helps to make men true, honest, just, pure, and loving. Be on the side. Be on the side. Be on the side of Jesus, for he's on our side. I pray that these few words have found you with.
And at this time, as I said before, we have, we will have an open communion here. So if you don't belong here, take communion. You're baptized, believe of Jesus Christ. You're accepting heaven as your personal savior. You too can take of our communion today. In 1 Corinthians, it says this, 11th chapter, 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take me, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 